as children, we are used to asking our parents uh, everything. And as children, we are used to understanding practically nothing. Uh, as a child, you know, when you've no idea how a combustion engine works. You've no idea how electricity works. You've no idea how politics works. You've no idea how a ship that's made of steel can float. It's, made, it's iron. It should sink. Why is it floating? You, just, you don't know. I mean, uh, you've no idea how most things work. And you've no problem just asking mom, mommy, how does this work? How does that, how does this, what's, where? Daddy, how does this work? You know, we've no problem asking questions. We're used to not knowing as a child because everything is new. Uh, and every, hopefully everything is a mystery as well. Everything is kind of, everything is exciting. Uh, as you work out how, how, as you begin to work out how, how, how all these things work and how they function. Okay. And even as adults, even as adults, we still have, we're still surrounded by things that maybe some people understand, but maybe I don't. Like, um, whenever we're shopping for cars or when I was buying a car for my sister or my mom or that, that kind of, not, that, not that I paid, not that I bought the car for them. I went car shopping for them, do you know? And they'd be the kind of people who would say, I just want a car that gets me from A to B. They don't know how it works. They don't care. And you can try explaining it. It won't make a difference. Okay, it's just, you know, see, if you're half clutching, then the clutch plate is wearing off the, the, the plate that carries the power into the drive shaft, into the gearbox. So that you're, you're going to wear the clutch out. You said words there, uh-huh, <laughs> so don't know, don't care, uh, and yet they use it every day. So they use a car every day, they have no idea how it works, um, and don't care. Uh, and again, even like electricity, LCD screens, uh, Wi-Fi, how we can transmit information through radio waves and satellites and Ethernet cables and all that. Do you know how it works? And yet you use it every day, you know? So we're surrounded by mysteries, and um, we can, we can, we can we can work with and use mysteries that we don't understand. But we can still use them, if you will. We can still live surrounded by mysteries. You don't, basically what I'm saying is you don't have to actually be able to comprehend everything that you effectively use. Okay? You don't, have to be, you don't have to understand how a phone works to be able to use the phone. Just use the phone. You don't have to be able to understand how electricity works to know how just to plug in your hair dryer and dry your hair. Okay? It's enough just to kind of use it effectively. Don't use a hair dryer for heating water. <laughs> stupid <laughs> but so w we can use mysteries without fully understanding how they work in today's gospel we're heading into well we, we've begun this it's, it's John chapter 6 but tomorrow is, is when it really kicks off about Jesus just driving the message home my flesh is real food my blood is real drink he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever and the flesh that I will give, is, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. He's driving home, especially tomorrow, uh, five times, one after the other, that Jesus is the Eucharist, that the Eucharist is his flesh. Now, this is a mystery. This is a mystery. This is a mystery because you can try and get your head around it and it's just going to hurt you. It's just going to, because how on earth can God fit into wafers? How? And then, how on earth are we able to contain God? Uh, how? And then, if that is God, then how on earth aren't I completely, radically transformed every time I receive Holy Communion? If this is God. Or, if this is God, why, why aren't there more kind of, I don't know, angels visible? Why isn't there more lightning sparking out of it? Why is it so simple? And yet it's God. And yet, like, scientifically, the chemical properties and all of that are the same of the bread or of the wine before the consecration and after consecration. But we believe this is God. Why? Because Jesus says so. So <clears throat> trying to understand the Eucharist uh, merely scientifically or, or something like that is just going to... It doesn't really work because the Eucharist goes beyond that. <clears throat> the Eucharist is, at one time, yes, a physical reality, but... If you say, for example, with, with a person, you know, we are united, you know, we're united. Can you measure that unity? Can you quantify it? Can you observe it? Well, you can, yeah, you, you can kind of observe it maybe, but, we, but per, two people can be united even though they might not actually be close together. We can be in two different countries and still be united. So then what is there to observe? What is there to measure? Nothing. The Holy Communion is called Holy Communion, union, unity. So it's, it's at one time, yes, a description of a physical reality, but it also should be the description of a relationship that I enter into holy communion. 
I enter into a holy communion with God. So it's not just a kind of a thing that I receive or don't receive, but it, it's a description of a whole, a whole, like God giving himself to me. Now, the reaction to that should be me giving myself to God, and this is the holy communion. God gives himself to me, so he's communicating himself to me. I give myself to him. I've communicated myself to him. This is now a communion of love, a holy communion, a communion with God, a communion that reflects the very inner life of the Trinity. The Father gives himself to the Son, the Son to the Father, Holy Spirit proceeding from that love. So holy communion, is, it's so, so much more than just the, forgive the profanity, but just the, the Catholic cookie that we receive at Mass or, or just that part of the Mass where yeah, it's just a bit of a common meal. It's so much more than that. It's so much more than just sharing a kind of a table fellowship or whatever you want to call it. it it's, it's that, yes, but way more at the same time. In each and every Holy Communion, God gives himself to you. He gives himself to you. And this was planned and prepared from all time. Back to, think of Moses and the Passover. You think of uh, Abraham and Melchizedek, Melchizedek offering bread and wine. This has been planned for so, in the mind of God for so, so long. And right up to our day, and here we are, you and I today, on the 6th, 5th, 5th, 6th, whatever it is, of May, uh, and we're about to receive Holy Communion, enter into a Holy Communion with God. It's stunningly privileged and beautiful and amazing. And we get to do it. God just gives himself so, so readily, no defense to you and I. And this should change us. This should give us great hope, consolation, and joy. Because if God is within, if God is at my side, who can be against us? Who can be against us? So in all of our difficulties, we're in a holy communion with God. Can we understand this? No. But you don't need to. You don't need to. You don't need to understand it in order to use it effectively. Pardon again the expression, use it. We should don't use the Eucharist. But we, we live in this communion. We don't have to fully understand it to benefit from it. Because we'll never fully understand God. To be honest, you'll never even fully understand the person beside you. You know, your husband, your wife, there'll still be mysterious parts of them. And they're wonderful and all, but a human being. God, we will never fully understand. Never. But that's, that's okay. The Eucharist, we'll never fully understand. But that's okay. It's not a mystery to be solved. It's a mystery to be adored, to be beheld, to be a mystery to be entered into. St. Faustina in her diary, she describes, <clears throat> after receiving Holy Communion, this union into which she wants to enter with the Lord. So I'll, we can end today with that. We'll read it again after, after we receive. My Jesus, in the host, whom I have this very moment received into my heart, to this union with you I offer myself to the heavenly father as a sacrificial host abandoning myself totally and completely to the most merciful and holy will of my god from today onward your will lord is my food take my whole being dispose of me as you please whatever your fatherly hand gives me i will accept with submission peace and joy i fear nothing no matter in what direction you lead me helped by your grace i will carry out everything you demand of me I no longer fear any of your inspirations, nor do I probe anxiously to see where they will lead me. Lead me, O God, along whatever road you please. I have placed all my trust in your will, which is for me love and mercy itself.